So you want to become a property investor and you're thinking, well, I'm just a beginner. How do I actually get started? Well, in this video, you're going to learn the five decisions you need to make when you become a property investor. So grab a pen and a wee bit of paper so you can write down your choices as you go, because by the end of this, you're going to have your own property investment strategy. I'm Ed, an economist here at Opus Partners, and this is Property Now. First, you need to choose your property investment strategy, and you've got three main options. The first is the buy and hold strategy. This is where you buy a quality property and you just wait for it to go up in value. Maybe you'll make some money through the rental cash flow as well. It's a very passive strategy. So it's a good one if you don't want to do a lot of work. So people with busy lives, busy jobs, you want to make money from property, but you don't want it to rule your life. Well, if that's you, buy and hold. That's going to be your strategy. Then you've got the Burr strategy. This is where you buy a doer upper, you renovate it to increase the value and the rent, and then you hold on to it. And that's why Burr, that stands for buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and then repeat. And the good thing about this one is you might spend 50k on the renovation, but the value of the house might go up by, call it 100k. There is a downside. Well, you've got to have the money and the time to actually renovate. Even if you hire a builder, hire a painter to do some of the work for you, it's still going to take your time to manage. And then you've got the last strategy, flipping. Now that's where you buy a property, you do it up, sell it pretty quickly, and this is the most active and most risky of the strategies we've talked about. You'll miss out on the property going up in value over time, and that's because you're going to buy and sell so quick. But because you keep doing that, you're going to pull the money out straight away. So that's a strategy for people who want to earn an income through property and have it replace their job. Now, of course, there are other more complex strategies, but this is property investment for beginners. So which strategy are you going to go for? Is it going to be the buy and hold, burr or flipping? Write down your answer now. The next decision is whether you go for a new build or an existing property. Now, new builds are properties that have just been built or are about to be built by a developer. Now, you don't need as much money to get started. You only need a 20% deposit rather than a 35% deposit for existing properties. And you're also going to pay less tax because of interest deductibility, shorter bright line test. That may change at the upcoming election though. But here's the thing, you can't renovate a new build property. It's brand new, nothing to do to it. So new builds are a really good fit for people who want the passive strategy. If you don't want to renovate, new builds are for you. Existing properties, well, they require a high deposit and some more money to get started, renovation costs. You will pay more tax, but you can renovate them to increase the value and the rent. So if you want that active renovation-based strategy, you're going to invest in existing properties. So what are you going to choose, new or existing? Don't copy my answers. Now you need to know whether you're going to buy a house, a townhouse, maybe an apartment. And we usually think about this as growth versus yield. Now, growth properties tend to go up in value faster, but they don't get as good of a rental return. So these are things like houses and townhouses and growing areas. Yield properties, on the other hand, those are things like apartments and student accommodation, boarding houses. They're not going to go up in value as fast, but they do have better rent, so the rental cash flow is better. So growth properties will generally make you more money over time, especially if you're starting out like most beginners do, and you've got to take out a big mortgage. So they're going to be a better fit for people who are younger, maybe if your age is away from retirement and need to build your wealth first. Your yield properties, they're going to be a good fit if you've already got lots of money and you can buy them without a big mortgage because then you're going to be able to just live off the cash flow. Now, if you've already got lots of money, yield may be the right fit for you. If you need to make your money first, growth properties could be the right decision. So lock it in, which are you going for, growth or yield? And if you like learning about property in this unbiased way, make sure you hit subscribe. We release new videos every Monday and Wednesday. Your next decision is where you wanna buy. Is it gonna be a big city or a small town? And the thing is, the best areas are always changing because the data always changes. So your main decision is going to be, do you want to invest in the bigger city with 40,000 people or more, or a smaller town? Now your bigger cities, they tend to go up in value more consistently than smaller towns, and that's just because you've got a 
bigger and more diverse economy, lots of businesses, lots of industries, a bit easier for people to get jobs. That makes it easier to find a tenant because there's lots of them. And often those bigger cities, you're going to get high population growth that helps support higher house prices. Your smaller towns, though, they have lower and cheaper properties. So if you don't have a lot of money, maybe you can only afford to invest in a small town. And because the prices are lower, houses are cheaper, the gross rental returns tend to be a bit higher in those smaller towns compared to the big cities where you've got to spend more money to buy a house. But house prices in your small towns tend to be more start and stop. They only go up sporadically. Like here's Wonganui from 2005 to 2023. See how house prices stayed flat for so long and then they just took off like a frog in a sock really quickly. That's what can happen in those smaller towns. So it's all about what can you handle and what you're comfortable with. So what are you gonna go for? Is it gonna be the big city or the small town? And decision number five is how you're going to find the property. And this all comes down to whether you want to do it yourself or if you want some help choosing and finding that property. Now, if you've said you want to invest in new builds, well, if you want to do the DIY approach, just go on TradeMe, realestate.co.nz, maybe go to a developer directly. That's your DIY option. Or if you want a bit of help and advice, you're going to be going to a property investment company. That's where you work with a financial advisor to create a property investment plan and then choose properties with you. Now, us here at Opus Partners, we're an example of a property investment company, but there are others like us, Propeller, Positive Real Estate, just Google property investment companies, you'll find a whole heap of them. If you want to renovate and do flips, you're going to be going for that existing property. If you do the DIY, you can jump on TradeMe, realestate.co.nz, use a real estate agent. Or if you want some help, you can use a company like I Find Property, Wolf Property, Asset Lab, or Property Apprentice. These guys are property coaching companies. So now you've made the five key decisions you need to make if you're going to be a property investor. And you should have written down now your property investment strategy. Now, if you're interested in new builds and want some help with that passive strategy, your next step is to book a free meeting with us here at Opus Partners. Just head over to opuspartners.co.nz. We help regular Kiwis grow their wealth through new build investment properties.